Okay, so now I'm in the uh, preparing phase of me putting on um, plot plate on these kits. But first off, I was beginning to, you know, start to sand down some of the parts a little bit more, cleaning it up a bit, checking on a few things here and there. I'm just going to remove some of the parts from the, um, from this kit. Mainly also, like, let me move the backpack. I'm also going to have to remove the thrusters. Because some parts will be difficult for me to paint and touch up. Because I may, of course, touch up the actual inside of this. So this one will be on its... Um, on its, uh, you know, on its clips. Not too much though, because I'm not, I, you know, I'm not going to take the whole thing apart. Just specific parts. Um, obviously, like this arm will be removed. This part will be removed. This will be painted, and um, whatnot. Um, it will be primed, and then it will be somehow certain parts will be pa painted in layers. Um, the one thing, of course, that I realize that when you start. When you're going to do a flat base paint color, it's not going to be an even, it's going to be like a rough texture. And I'm not going to do hand painting, but I am going to do hand painting it's at a certain degree. Um, for example, like how I painted the, um, the, Delta Pla uh, the Delta Gundam, some parts, some paints will be easy to paint with the, you know, uh, with the, um, with the airbrush and with the, you know, some part, some paints cannot be painted with the airbrush. I don't know, it's kind of, I'm maybe, I'm sorry if, I, if I'm not sounding out too clear here, but, um, I guess I'm gonna have to show it to you later on as we progress in the build. Um, but for now, I want to begin putting on some plot plates, and as a matter of fact, I got a series of plates that I've already cut up and have ready for this. Um, like for example, this one will go right over here, but I want to sand it down, I want to straighten it out a bit and put it on top of this just to give it a little bit more of um, a rise. Then this part was something that I was kind of throwing up in the air where I put something here, like that, and then I put three of these parts here going in a line like that. Kind of like an extra layer of armor over this. Um, at one point, I wanted to do... <laughs> this is something that um, I've seen in military um, vehicles and on the military channel. Um, the striker. The, um, the armored personnel carrier known as the striker that the military use. There is an armor that goes around the striker that it looks like someone gutted it, uh, uh, an old spring mattress and then wrapped it around it. I've seen it in, the, in certain older tanks and now I'm seeing it in newer tanks. Now, the whole purpose of, the, of the, this technology, and I know someone's going to tell me what it's called, I just don't remember the, the proper term for it, but the reason why they have this around uh, the, stri uh, the striker tank and some other military vehicles is because it prevents RPGs, rocket propelled grenades, from hitting the tank and penetrating the armor. It instead uh, it'll hit the springs, it'll explode, but it will not cause damage to the ins to the surface of the, t of the tank or the vehicle because it needs a flat surface to hit in order for it to explode. If it had something, uh, some spacing in and then it gets caught and explodes, obviously there would be a slight explosion, but it will not something to penetrate and hit the armor. An idea like that would have been cool. Unfortunately, I don't see that many people using uh, rocket propelled grenades in the uh, Gundam animated series, so that won't be necessary. What I'll do is uh, I'll create my own version of um, of a reactive ar uh, reactive armor, or uh, there's something called I think it's Alblant armor. I could be wrong, but the reactive armor seems like a more logical choice, which I am going to put, you know, over here on top. Nothing here, that's going to be left alone, but it's definitely this one here, here, and here, a little bit up here. Um, obviously there's, 
this will the plot plate will serve two purposes. One, it'll give it a little bit more definition of the part, and two, um, it also hides the uh, seam lines, which no big deal. It's not cheating, but it's still you know something unique to do on this kit. So this is what the part looks like without the plot plate. And here's the part with the plot plate on. What do you guys think? I was trying to feel this out and see how it would come out while I was um, making this. And um, it, it went one way and then I went the other and then I found an in-between. I thought this would be a lot better this way. I began with the shoulders and I knew I wanted to put like an extended part out kind of like what I mentioned before and I came up across this part where like three plot plates here and here like an added like like an added protection against of course projectile based weaponry maybe being based weaponry who knows so that it wasn't like an extra layer of armor I have to sand it down and snip it off a bit more, but I think I may have to take it off and do another layer over. Um, when I got to the forearm, I put a plate here, of course, to cover the the um, the top part of the seam line, which now, with the blade, I'm going to cut in this angle, like that, so that way it's in that direction. So that way here and that way there. The the other side I did it right, the same way, I don't know if you guys can see it, and forgive me, the lighting is so bright here because you have white plot plate and of course beige background, it makes it difficult to see. Um, I've already done this part here, I may have to do it again, so i got to be very careful. Now this part I'm really proud of. I put this plot plate here and using thin plot plate strands like this styrene which is very thin I decided to cut pieces of it very small as you can see I don't know if I can zoom in there we go um, and I put it on like bolts it was sticking up high so I had to sand it down a bit I'm gonna sand it down again but that came out nice as you can see didn't feel like this needed something I left it alone um, of course I did the same thing over here putting bolts here given an extra layer of armor. So, this pretty much completes both arms. These arms are done. As for the legs, this took me a while to figure this out, and I'm going to show the back part of the legs first. So, I put on strips here to the side, which is on the outside of the leg, and strips here um, to contour this. Um, as an extra layer. I may do something else, who knows. I'm, then I put a strap around here. Give it this uh, around the calf. But for the knee, I came, up, I, came, I came upon this. At first I put a layer of pla I put a small plastic part there, styrene. Then I put two layers of the of the wider part. And I said to myself, let me build off from there and see what I got. And no matter what I thought of, it didn't come out right. It didn't feel right. Then, I forgot that I had these um, round styrene um, plot plate. For those of you who want to see it, there's a hole there. So, I I put another layer of plot plate, like a T-shape down there. And then I, put, I cut these parts, like a little donut shape. Put it in a t, uh, uh, upside down T formation, as you can see, and then using thinner styrenes, I made the borders around here to give it an extra layer. And my impression for this would be kind of like an explosive, um, like uh, like you know, a, a, um, Albion armor, I think it's called, or explosive armor, kind of like what I have in the shoulders. So if some, if uh, you know, if a target tries to hit the the knee it'll explode out to dissipate the explosion so I did this and it came out pretty well I liked it came out on both of them as you can see 
as for the um, as for the foot, the foot itself is okay. I'm going to leave that alone. But it's the ankle armor that I was more uh, concerned. And then I, so I, I decided to put plot plate to the side here and here, and I'm going to put bolts like I did with the arm, forearms. As for this, I did a plate there, and using the round plot plate, I cut it in half, sand it down, and I slide, put it on top of this, so this gives it a little extra bumper type of thing. So, this is coming out pretty damn good. I've already taken care of all the limbs, just needs a little sanding down. But then I'm going to work on the um, waist and the body, which um, I need to work on. So, it's all coming good. Now what makes, of course, the Type-C more, more unique would probably be the weapon itself. Um, and this Mopup type weapon is going to be an interesting part to modify. Sand it down in many parts, especially around here, here, stuff like that. The buttstock, of course, has been sanded down, as I mentioned before, and I will put something here to give it a little bit more definition. But, of course, detailing the frame itself is probably going to be no small task. I brought, I got the very, very thin plot plate that I will apply here. Maybe do something up here, like create my own site. But think about this. Why would you want to create a site for a large artillery piece? Pretty much the gun itself is the same gun that you would find on any military tank in the world today. So the sensors is already going to be on the head. I wouldn't need to put sensor, you know, some sort of sight uh, mechanism on the gun itself. But then again, many people hit, did comment on the fact that the Jesta has a sight, uh, sight-like thing on um, of his own. I'm looking at the Jesta right now, and the sight kind of reminds me of the red dot sight from uh, some of the machine guns that I've played in the uh, Modern Warfare games and of course Battlefield 3. Maybe I can do one, maybe I don't know, I may consider that. But this is not where I want to focus my uh, construction of this gun. Technically speaking, I want to focus around here. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with bolt pop weaponry, the reason why they were made was that, of course, when the French and the, um, I don't know if it was the French, it could be the Italians, but I, I may be wrong. Someone uh, thought of the fact that if you put the fire mechanism over here you have and have the barrel here, you have a shorter version of the bar gun, making it easier to um, maneuver around uh, close, close proximities. Uh, good on paper and does work in real world. But think about this. I'm bringing a submachine gun weaponry in the battlefield where my, t my target could be at least half a mile away. And it is, technically speaking, if you look at it, it even if you hold on to it fine, it's still technically a submachine gun light weapon. What I want to do is I want to extend the barrel even further and give it more of a submachine gun, um, excuse me, light machine gun type look to it, or an assault rifle like to it. But to do this, the barrel's got to go. And this is what I'm going to do. Um, actually, this blade is a bit worn out, so we'll use this. There we go. Now, I'm going to cut a hole here. Um, as a matter of fact, I should have my... Um, hang on a second. Here we go. My trusty little pin vise. Now, drill a hole right here. I actually used this... The, the last time I used my pin vise was actually making a hole in the front part of the um, the head of the draw C where I put the LEDs, for those of you who remember. Uh, go back to... if you You know, get... If you, for those of you who haven't seen my build of the C, I built it in the beginning of this year, so take a look at that. There we go. 
But the uh, pin vise is a cool tool to make some holes. There we go. Now, I don't think I can do this with this part because it doesn't fit. But, of course, this will be used as the barrel. But I'm going to expand this out a bit, carve it out a bit more, and then I'm going to thread it in, give it go in as far in as possibly can so that way it has a, you know, maybe, maybe an inch or so. That way I can then give it an extra inch of barrel length. So, this is what the gun would look like before putting on the plow plate. 